Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and it's wonderful for you to stop by here again today. All right, now, in our time together today, what I'm planning on doing is, in fact, opening up a Power Mac uh, G5 and putting stuff into it. Uh, but not the quad, which we've been featuring in recent videos, and definitely not the 2003 uh, dual CPU uh, 1.8 gigahertz machine. No, my plan is to begin the rebuilding, as it were, of the uh, dual core 2.3 gigahertz, which is also from late 2005. Uh, so, what I've got several things in mind, and what we're going to focus on today, first of all, are the PCIe cards. I have another FireWire card. This is not identical to the one that is now happily living in the, uh, in the quad, uh, but it is very similar. It has two external ports. It has one internal port, and it does, just like the other one, require Molex power. Now, fortunately, one of the things I do, when I order a computer component, uh, unless it's really expensive, I will tend to order at least a couple just to have spares. And fortunately, I did in this case too. I ordered two of them and will be well prepared to get this going. I'm going to be interested in seeing in the process of doing this, uh, running speed tests, we found with the quad that the uh, PCIe added slots were slightly faster than the uh, the built-in FireWire 800 port. So, we'll see. All right, and since we're talking about PCIe, this is, in fact, a direct duplicate of the eSATA PCIe card that is in the quad now. Uh, I had a lot of difficulty getting these, this thing to seat both when I first put it in the uh, dual core 2.3 and in the 2.5 quad. Uh, hopefully I'm getting better at it now, so it won't be as big a problem. Uh, so those are the, the two main things here. The other thing I'm intending to do, uh, I had replaced the RAM because I'd moved the 16 gigabytes into the quad. And I replaced that with RAM I had on hand, in what I refer to as the Boxo RAM, uh, with 8 uh, gigabytes. However, the, the machine only registered 6 of those. So I'm, of course, going to reseat the RAM, and we'll hopefully see uh, all 8 gigabytes in there. And... At some point down the road, maybe I'll, I'll upgrade it to the 16, but it's going to run very, very well uh, on 8. Now, the one thing I'm, I'm not going to address at all today is the storage. Uh, rather than dealing with SSDs, we have in this machine now two uh, mechanical hard uh, drives, uh, one with Leopard installed. It's a clone of the Leopard installation that's on the now in the dual core. Uh, the quad core, excuse me, I'm getting my computers all mixed up. Uh, and the disc that originally came out of the quad that had Tiger on it is also now in there. And for the moment, we're just going to leave that as is. And again, maybe sometime down the road, uh, I may do more with that. Time will tell on that one. Uh, so, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting this machine back into a, a little bit closer to the state in which it was before I started pulling all that stuff out. And it, it should, I hope, turn out well. I'm looking forward to doing it. And if you're looking forward to seeing the process, please stay tuned. Okay, here's the machine in question on its side. Take the door off. Remove the air baffle. And we can, of course, doing this with 
with one hand, not so easy. Okay, our RAM is down here. You can see that even though only six gigabytes are registering, all of the RAM is, uh, all of the, the slots are filled. Why it isn't all registering is, is hard to say. So, we simply have our open PCI, uh, PCIe slots up there. I see one of those uh, slot covers doesn't want to stay in very well. Uh, here's where our two hard drives are. And, of course, in here, we can easily, now that I've figured it out, uh, pull out the optical drive in order to attach the Molex splitter uh, to the power supply, which worked perfectly well in the other machine. Uh, all right, so I'm going to get to that, and we will um, give, give you updates as we go. All right, so please stay tuned. Okay, the RAM is reseated. Uh, now, incidentally, if you're ever dealing with one of these machines, uh, RAM does need to be installed into G5s in pairs. Uh, if you're only going to use two modules, it should be here and here, and you have to use at least two. The next two would be here and here. So if it's four modules, it would be those two, and so on, here and here, and then finally here and here. Uh, I think the problem was here. I don't think I had that really seated well, and since it has to be in, in pairs, if the machine can't see the module in this slot, it won't be able to register the module up here. Uh, so anyhow, that's how RAM works in PowerMac G5s. All right, next we're going to get the... Uh, actually, I think what, what I'll do next is deal with the, the Molex card, since that's the fiddliest thing that we have to do here. So get the Molex uh, splitter in there and route the cable correctly. Then we can put in the PC, uh, PCIe cards. All right, so stay tuned while I work on that. All right, we have our Molex splitter installed. And Molex is coming here through the, uh, the opening through which the IDE cable passes. And you can see here the Molex plugged into our Firewire 800 card and our eSATA card right there. We do, of course, now have one open slot on this machine, unless I decide at some time in the future, which is probably unlikely, but with me, you never know. Um, if I were to decide to install a double slot graphics card that would go away so i'm thinking we'll just leave that as it is right now uh so all those connections are made we've got the firewire card in the top slot which will make it easier if i ever do put a firewire drive that i may do at some point and our ram seems about as securely uh, slotted in as I'm able to do it. So unless there actually is something wrong with one of those modules, uh, we should be good to go. So I guess the thing to do now will be to button it back up, plug it in, and give it a try. So please stay tuned. Well, once again, we have Screenium going, so I have to keep an eye on the time so I don't exceed... Um, I got one clip on that last video that was about eight minutes, so anyhow. All right, let's have a look and see what's happening. Well, it is the dual 2.3 gigahertz power PC G5, all right, that's good. But we still only see six gigabytes of RAM. All right, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, it's the same two that are given problems. 
Darn it. Uh, okay, well, you know, I have an option. I can dig, dig back into the uh, box of RAM, and we've got some more DDR, uh, DDR2 RAM that we can deal with. All right, uh, let's just check PCI cards. Okay, yeah, the, these two are the uh, Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, Firewire is on the PCI bus, uh, PCIe bus. Okay, the GeForce display is certainly there. Uh, and, yeah, slot 4, PCI bridge, that would be the Firewire 800 card. And here on slot 3, AHCI controller, that will be the eSATA card. All right, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to crack the machine open again. Uh, I, I won't need to show it to you. Uh, put in some different RAM into those two slots and hopefully we see something better happen. Well, in any event, please well, let me bring the screen back up. In any event, please stay tuned. All right, we're back and this has been a merry chase. Uh, I tried replacing the RAM that I thought was a problem and nothing good happened. <laughs> uh, so I've basically just been taking it out two sticks at a time until I could finally find out what the heck the problem was. In any event, if we look here at about this Mac, we see we now have our 8 gigabytes of DDR2, thank heaven. And if we come into System Profiler, they're all there. Now, it, it is mismatched a little bit, but the pairs are all right. So, it's working, and, and at some point off in the future, I should do something about that. Uh, ah! Okay, I'm going to have to check, I'm going to have to open this up again, because we don't have... Yeah, we uh, the DVD drive is not showing up. Oh, fudge. Well, we can certainly check on that. Uh, but, anyway. One more thing that we can do. Okay, so the SPE SATA, uh, the eSATA card is certainly working correctly since that mounted. Uh, it was showing up, but that doesn't necessarily mean it like works. All right, let's try FireWire now. Oops. Okay, we have a problem with FireWire. No, no. FireWire showed up. Uh, I was looking for light in the wrong place. Uh, so we have we have FireWire. That's good. We have eSATA. That's working. All right. Well, I'm going to have to <laughs> open it up again and make sure that DVD drive is uh, corrected, uh, connected correctly. Or correct the connection, I should say. Oh, well, stay tuned. All right. It would seem that in the process of getting the Molex splitter uh, to pass through and plug into the Firewire card, uh, the IDE cable came unplugged, so no big deal. That's in there. Uh, I changed some things around with the cards. Uh, the FireWire card seemed to be coming loose. That screw just didn't want to go in. So I moved the eSATA down to slot 2 and FireWire's in slot 1. And I managed to get the slot cover in there and that screw tightened down. 
Uh, now, hopefully marks are going to continue to work, and there shouldn't be a problem if I do at some point connect this internal firewire port up into here. Uh, I'll be able to get that connected well enough, and hopefully the RAM still works and everything. Okay, so I'm going to put it back together again, and uh, we'll see if she boots up. Stay tuned. Okay, everything is back together, and here we are on the desktop. Uh, things seem to be working pretty well. Obviously, our PCIe cards are working because we have our FireWire drive here. We have our eSATA card there, eSATA drive there. So, that's all good. And about this Mac. 8 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. We're we're in good shape there. Now the big one. Okay. The DVD uh, CD writer is there. Look in uh, ATA. That's there as well. All right. This is all good. Serial ATA. Shows us our two drives here. Uh, Western Digital, we also have a Seagate drive. Okay, so we have all the storage that, uh, that we were looking for. Memory. Of course, it's all there. We wouldn't have our 8 gigabytes, would we? And, yep, yeah, the PCI cards uh, entry shows us Obviously, the two gigabit Ethernet uh, ports are on the PCIe bus, uh, as is the one of the fire wires. I'm not sure exactly which. Doesn't really matter. And as far as things that are in there, slot one, of course, is the graphics card. Slot two is the eSATA card. And slot three is the uh, the firewire card so we have two extra firewire ports and we have the, the one internal that we can deal with all right quick look at displays now we do have uh, incidentally if I haven't mentioned this already we are on uh, an Apple Cinema display, but it's not the 30-inch display. This is the 20-inch display that I picked up quite a bit earlier. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to actually end this clip, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts. So please stay. All right, we're back. Now I'm going to close this up with... Uh, speed tests. Uh, I put on a copy of the movie The Revenant here. Uh, we can take a look. And it is uh, 2.64 gigabytes. Let's see how long it takes to copy over onto the FireWire drive. Now. Okay. Now, by the way, uh, this is currently connected via one of the PCIe ports. I intend to repeat this test uh, doing it on the built-in. Okay. We're at 22 seconds now. This is pretty darn good. This is a pretty big file. Just went over 30. And here we are. I just made that 49 seconds, so literally the uh, promised less than a minute was in fact less than a minute. Okay, now I'm going to reconfigure things here, so we will end this particular clip and pick it up with the next part of the test. 
So please stay tuned. Well, we're back, and that was a pretty easy reset. All I had to do was unplug the FireWire drive from the card and plug it into the built-in. So let's try that test again. And now. Fifty-seven point two, and on the card it was forty-nine point two, which is a noticeable difference. Uh, thus, we see what was noticed on the quad was not really an anomaly to that computer. Uh, it really, honestly, is faster using the PCIe. Uh, FireWire 800 port than it is using the built-in. Isn't that interesting? Uh, that's a good thing to know and of course this is two different brands of FireWire 800 cards. Well, okay, I think having done that we can certainly wrap up this video. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Please, be good to other people. They really deserve it, and we need to make this a better world. And please, be good to yourselves, because you really deserve it. And you want to be able to enjoy this better world. And until we can accomplish that, take very good and careful care in these difficult times. We shall be back with you with more videos, a couple more G5 related videos, I think, and uh, a lot of other stuff too. Until that time, this has been Broken Electronics.